Hello, everybody. How are you all doing today? I hope everybody's having a fabulous Tuesday. I'm super excited to be here today and uh, be hosting you all. Um, so let me just give it a couple of minutes while people are joining um, because I am horrible at multitasking. So I want to make sure everybody gets on because once I get started, I will not be able to see them. <laughs> I will not be able to see everyone. So. And then in the fashion of AI, I've discovered this new AI technology that I got to make sure has joined us um, in the room. So give me just a second and then we are going to dive in because we have a lot to go over today. So while I am finishing up getting set up, I want to make sure that everybody has chat GPT installed. So please confirm just by saying yes in the chat that you have uh, chat GPT installed you got yourselves accounts because we are definitely going to be doing um some uh, action so i uh, uh if you registered i gave you guys instructions on how to get chat gp uh, get an account with chat gpt unfortunately we will not have a lot of bandwidth to um troubleshoot that with you all today so if you don't have an account with chat gpt you will need one um, if not for this class, but certainly if you want to do anything that we talk about tonight, okay? Um, so let me breathe and let me get uh, let me get us uh, let me get let me get connected. <laughs> Hold on just a second. Doing all things. All right. Let's see if. Uh, We've got, and so those that um, are joining, I'm still accepting people in. I turned this thing off like um, a while ago, and I don't know how to uh, turn it off. Okay, all right. So I think it sort of died down. Um, hey, Cindy, do you want to uh, make me a co-host and I can let people in while you're doing the oh, that'd program? Be awesome. Who's that speaking? Who, who is the gracious woman who said that? that? Yeah. Is that Gina? I think you're the one who's talking. Let's yes, see. Ma'am. Yes, I'm going to make you a co-host. I love that idea. That's beautiful. <laughs> Usually I have uh, Jalen on, but I didn't ask her to join um, today. So are you able to uh, co-host Gina? I already did it. Yes, ma'am. Awesome. I already looked at you. Beautiful. We can get started. I appreciate that. Thank you for helping me. So, welcome everybody to our 30 day content plan using AI. Listen, AI is the hottest thing in the world uh, right now in terms of uh, the ability for us to make our lives easier. And so, if you are not speaking, please go on mute um, and let's just make sure because we, we are recording. And I want to see, I don't see my fire, my, my, I don't see my AI note taker in the list. So let me just invite one more time, make sure I haven't done anything. So let me invite that one more time um, and see, because it's such a handy little tool. I'll have to tell you guys about this at the end. Is anybody using AI for note taking, like meeting note taking? just got hip to this. Like, I feel like another technology I've been in the dark about. Um, all right, Gina. No, you, please tell us how to do that. Uh, yes, it's like, I, I could probably do just a class just on AI technology that I'm using to make my life easier. And so Gina, if you do see uh, see it come in, it's called Fire uh, Fireflies AI. So. Um, I need that. I need that technology in here. But nonetheless, let me make sure that we are recording. Uh, we are recording, and we are a go. All right. So, welcome everybody to our 30-day content plan using AI. And so, so many amazing faces on our call tonight. And like I said, I am super excited to have you guys here tonight. Um, this is a really great topic, content and then using technology, because I don't know if you guys like struggle with this, but content has been like my Achilles heel in my business um, for years. And so I just, I feel like, I've, you know, I was telling my girlfriend the other day, I feel like 
now I'm I'm playing a Mario Brothers game and I've up leveled my content game tremendously because of uh, the technology that um, exists. So welcome again. You we are here so that we can create a 30 day content plan using AI. We are going to be using Chat GPT, and I'm also going to introduce you to Oliver if you don't know who Oliver is too, which is another great AI tool that's just been recently released. Many of you all were in the beta um, that just concluded last week, so I will be talking a little bit about Oliver and how you can utilize Oliver in your content creation. And so listen, if you are a travel advisor and you want to you want to do one of two things. You either want to increase your sales, want to sell more packages, right? You want to get your name of your business out there, or you want to get engagement in your travel business. You want to meet people and you want to do it in the digital space, then content is the way to do that. And so if you are not publishing quality value added content, you are doing your business and yourself a disservice. So we're going to talk about how you can do that. That, um, in today's training. And so listen, here is my promise to you. You can increase all three of these things through content. So you will be able to increase your engagement, your leads, and your sales, creating a content, um, not only a plan, but also the content that goes along with the plan, right? In less time um, and really in a couple of hours if you do it well. So let's dive in. So let me know in the comments how many of you guys are like super excited about this topic? Like this has been something I, I personally have struggled with in my travel business and my business. And I don't mean struggle with like, no, I mean struggle. That's exactly what I mean. I mean struggle, like putting together content, coming up with ideas, creating the content, scheduling the content, all that goes with content. What the heck am I going to talk about this week, this day, this month, right? That has consumed a significant portion of my mentalness. <laughs> it has consumed a lot of my mental abilities and time over the course of seven years. And so when you've got technology, I mean, every, I would say over the last seven years, you know, there's just been little bit of things that have like really helped propel me in the content space. But what we're going to go over tonight is one of the largest things that have, have, have um, propelled me in my ability to create content. All right. So for my goal for you tonight is, is that if you want to stop wasting time posting aimlessly with little or zero engagement and frankly, no sales, because frankly, I don't really just want to do posts to get likes, although it does warm the cockles of my soul. Um, that is not the reason why that I do posts. I want to be able to get some sort of reaction, action um, from the base of people that I communicate with through on social media, email, or what have you. And really the only way for you to stop wasting time on the content that you're creating is by making a shift to a value-driven content approach. And what is that? We're going to talk about what that is, right? And the only way to really make that shift to a value-driven content approach that allows you to increase your sales and connects with your audience on a deeper level is through creating and implementing a value-based content plan. And so, you know, I liked the combination of those words because if you're like value-driven content, like what the heck is that Sunday, right? So let's talk about what that is. Why is it so difficult for you and me to create value-based content, right? Why is it? We just want to post on our social media pages, information about trips, and we want people to buy. Isn't that what you want, right? You want to post a beautiful picture and you want to say a few words and you want it to automatically inspire somebody to be like, I want to book with her right now or him right now, right? That's what we want. But the reality is, is the reason why it's challenging for you and for me is because we need, we don't always understand how to make our content connect with our audience, right? And there's a, several reasons for this, right? It could be maybe you don't have the time, maybe you don't have the resources or the experience to do that, or even the expertise, right? For years, uh, when I started in the online space, I, I remember when I started back in 2016, 15, you know, I was, I always get confused if I started in 15 or 16, but it was around about that time sometime, right? 
really I started in the social media space in 20, um, in 20, 2012, I believe, I think it was 2012. And I tell people that the reason I joined social media is because I wanted to stalk my daughter. She was in high school or middle school, and I wanted to know what she was doing on social media. So that's how I got on social media. But I didn't know what to post. Like, how many of you guys feel like that? Like, I didn't know what to post. I didn't know what to say. So I started emulating everybody that was out there trying to figure out what my voice was, what I should say, what I was like, maybe I should talk about tips. I'm going to do a theme. I'm going to ask questions. I'm going to talk about something personal. And none of it really clicked with my audience. And I wonder if you guys feel the same way. Do you guys feel the same way in terms of your content creation? Yes. Right. So many of you guys are saying that you feel the same way. And so really what we're going to go over is we're going to, I'm going to give you an introduction to AI and why it is the bomb.com and how it can help you in those struggles. We're going to talk about the prompt. We're going to talk about the inputs to the prompt. And then we're going to talk about strategies for batch creating your content and how you can also use AI to help you with. And then we're going to talk about ways that you can set it up and forget, like literally set up the stuff, like do it. And you're going to just, it's going to magically show up in your inbox on your social media pages and all of that. So let's go ahead and get started. All right. So how many of you guys out there know, do not know, let, let's start with who does not know what artificial intelligence is. So say no, if you don't know what AI is relative to, you know, content creation, just let me get a feel for how many of you are out there that like really, when I sent the email to sign up for ChatGPT, you were like, what the heck is this? Like how many of you guys on, and we have about 50 of you all on tonight. So how this should be a very interactive class. How many of you guys did not know what ChatGPT was before you signed up with it? How many of you had to create new accounts? Just type um, in the comments so I can get a feel for that. We have several me's who were not like, I, I've never used AI. Um, you just signed up a few weeks ago. All right. So literally AI is the, you know, the, the, the name for what it is that uh, people are referring to as um, artificial intelligence. And it's been around for a while, but it's certainly gotten mainstream visibility in the, I, I want to say, Chat GPT was released in January, and one of my uh, business, uh, she's not even business besties, she's one of my besties, she, uh, she I remember she's, she sent me a messenger in Facebook, and she's like, I got something to tell you, and I was like, what, like, she, <laughs> Shelly, what do you got to tell me, and so she was like, my son just introduced me to Chat GPT, and I'm like, how much is it, and so, and that is where it began, um, and so, AI has really revolutionized many industries over the several years, um, including the ability for content creation. And what we're really going to explore today is how it can help you create engaging content that connects with your ideal audience. And so I'm hoping that you are equally as excited about this prospect for those people that I am actually literally introducing AI to in this training. All right, so here's some ways that it can help you. AI can analyze data, copious amounts of data for you um, about your audience, right? What they, what their preferences are. It can help you personalize your content. It can help you with top topic ideas. It can help you with recommendations. It can help you improve your SEO rankings. Literally, I have been using AI um, with my YouTube channel and my YouTube channel videos are now getting ranked one because of the way that I am SEOing my YouTube videos, all because of AI. So it can also save you copious amounts of time on content creation. So if you struggle with idea generation, brainstorming, trying to personalize things, and you're just like, I didn't get into the travel business to become a writer, 
then this is how AI, AI is going to be able to help you in that regard um, and make you look like a rock star as well. But I would be remiss if I didn't tell you what the limitations are of AI. It is not a magic pill. You do not want AI aimlessly writing for you, creating for you, and thinking for you. There are many people who are scared that AI is going to take over the world and, you know, we're all not going to have jobs and it's just going to be a, a horrible doomsday terminator situation the reality is that we are still very much needed um until they you know until it can replace the human ability to do these things that i'm talking about i don't think we've got any problem and the first item in terms of limitations is emotional intelligence and creativity although ai tools like oliver tools like chat gpt effectively they have been fed just copious amounts of information um, from different multiple sources, right? And however, it's it has no empathy, it has no no sense of what is right or wrong or any of that, right? And so this is where you come in. Um, because I, I absolutely use um chat GPT to help spur ideas, but I know my audience better than chat gpt does although it can go out there and look at like predictive you know words or concepts based on information it doesn't have an emotional connection and understand like i know when i read something if it's going to click or not because i have that emotional connection and intelligence about my particular audience and my expertise and that's going to be the same thing for you when you interview your clients and you know what they meant by the fact that they need a beach wedding right because they love the the, the feel of the sand between their toes and they want to walk barefoot you know on the the beach when they get married right chat gpt or ai is not going to be able to interpret that and be able to apply that kind of intelligence in its recommendation. So you do still have to utilize your own brain and senses in order to apply that. It, it has no ethical considerations, right? What is ethical or not? Now it has been trained, you know, many of these languages have been trained in terms of what's illegal and what is not, but there still is no, like it's not going to be able to tell you if it's something is ethical or not truly ethical or not you as a human person, you as an ethical being, you will be able to do that. Um, context and nuances. I will find that when I'm doing um, research, um, sometimes, you, not sometimes, all of the time, you have to set up the tool with context. Meaning, let's say, I want to talk about a topic and I don't I don't give the context on who my audience is. It'll the, it'll give results that are very generic, right? So you've got to set it up properly in order to get the kind of results that you want. So that context is so so very important and it really is the framework by which you get the better results. Um listen. Uh, we are in a world of biases, um, and ChatGPT has been fed those biases by the 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 engineers that uh, have created or continue to expand on it. So there's no way that we will be able to that it's bias free. So I want you guys to realize that. So if you're dealing with sensitive top types of topics. Um, that are not inclusive or um, or are not uh, aware, right? Of you need to you need to keep that in mind when you're looking at your results, right? So I don't want you to just like get results, don't read them. That would be a recipe for disaster. Get results and don't vet them against your own personal experience and what it is that you know, right? there are biases there are biases that have been fed into it i would i would assume sexual uh, biases i would assume race biases gender biases all of that so just be conscientious of those limitations and because it's been fed all of this information there is there is a potential for it to provide you with unintentional plagiarism you know when i was doing this uh preparation 
you know, I asked ChatGPT, like, what are some of the limitations? And it didn't include plagiarism, but I know because I'm in a bunch of forums that the results by definition of the fact that it's being fed information could put together information and it ultimately be a reenactment of information that it's already been fed. So, you know, the engineers that are out there are trying to do its best not to make that happen. But listen, it's my job to let you know what the limitations are and for you to be aware. So what does this mean for you? What this means for you is be smart. Be smart about how you use the results. If you are writing something, there are equally as many tools out there that, that will check for plagiarism. So make sure that you do that. Make sure that you are reading the content that you are putting together with ChatGPT. Don't just cut and paste and not uh, cover because if your name's attached to it, what does that mean? Your name's attached to it. All right, so that is uh, my public service announcement as it opposed to now we get to get to the fun. So here, I've pretty much already said this thing, but you wanna review and validate the um, AI output every time, all of the time, even if you get, if, if your job is to then hire somebody who the, reads all the stuff that you create, then let that be the thing that you do. Um, use it as a tool and not as a replacement for you, right? You are very valuable to this industry, to your clients. And just because you allow it to help you create content, you are still the expert. You still need to provide um, that level of, you know your client better than anybody else does, right? You know what your client meant by whatever it is in terms of what they're looking for in terms of their experience. So use it as a tool, not as a replacement for common sense and also for your own expertise. Um, and prioritize human connection. And, and what I interpret human connection by any opportunity that you can personalize uh, the way that you want to get your results to make sure that you can make a, a better and deeper connection in the content that you're creating, the better off you can be. All right. So please, at any time, I usually, you know, in these uh, sessions, talk about ask questions. Um, and, you know, I got like 15 windows open. So let me see if I can make sure I can keep the windows open. So I've got the chat open. So if you see me looking over there, that's because I'm looking at my other monitor. Um, so yes, yeah, somebody wrote fact check the results. Absolutely. Particularly when it comes to, if you're doing any sort of resort or, or resource research on a particular resort or destination, the information in chat GPT is as good as, uh, 2021. Oliver, which is a travel agency specific AI tool that's been created by a fine gentleman, Richard Earls, I think that's his last name. He has been feeding it travel specific information that's more current. So again, this is what you can do. Do not like, like don't ignore me because I don't want you coming back, slide in my inbox and be like, Sunday, you said, I did say, be careful, make sure that you protect what you're doing and be smart about it. All right, so before you get started, what you need, I should have put, you need ChatGPT, you need an AI tool. So that was sort of given because in the email that I sent out, I uh, gave you instructions on how to register for ChatGPT, how to create yourself an account. You can create yourself an account um, through uh, Google or an email account, I think proper, and you do need to have an account. So. You do need that. You're going to need the prompts. And we're going to talk about those prompts. And you are going to need to have some input um, to marry the prompts. And then I always say you need to have some sort of electronic document uh, or some electronic not notepad. So some place for you to copy and post. Because if you are a person who is a brainstormer, I am a content person in terms of I love the idea. I love the, the exercise of creating and brainstorming and researching. That is my superpower. Like, I love it. So I literally like have, you know, brainstorming conversations, chat, like I have an idea and then I like to blow it out on ChatGPT. You do not want to rely on ChatGPT to, to keep that stuff straight for you, keep it organized for you, or sometimes even allow you to have access to it because ChatGPT's history has gone down 
several times over the last several months as more people um, are using it. So you absolutely want to get into a cadence that when you do a result, you do a search, that you copy those results out into some place. I do have a tool that I'm using for that too. I'll have to talk about all that. Like I said, I could do a training just on all the tools that I'm using to help keep me organized and all of that. So let's get started and talk about the prompt. So what is a prompt? A prompt is really an important part of using any sort of chat AI type of tool that, um, and really the chat GPT. So AI has been a lot, has been around a long time, but this sort of chat bot is sort of a newer concept. Now, chatbots, you've experienced them in, because Facebook has had messenger bots for some years. I've been using messenger bots. I don't use them as often as I used to, but uh, if you've heard of a tool called ManyChat, if you've ever like sent something and you like you've been on a website and you've interacted with the help and you send a question and they respond back to you, that's a chat bot. And so what ChatGPT has done is it allowed chat bots for everyday person without any code. So you go into this chat bot and you actually can have a conversation and start getting responses. So you've got to be, so the prompt is really the questions that you ask the chat bot, right? The questions and the information that you want, you've got to prepare it in a way that gives it context and gives it uh, information so that you can get the results out. I literally feel like I have been, um, what's the right word? I have been honing my skills, sharpening my skills and perfecting my skills on creating prompts for you all that will allow you to get results based on the things that you need. And so this is what I've done is I've created a prompt that will allow you to create a 30 day plan. And so that's all the prompt is, is it's a way to ask for what you want that's going to give you the results. The better you can ask for what you want, what do you think? The better the results. So the more specific you can be, the better the results are. The more context you can give it, the better your results are. And so that's what we're going to demo. Uh, now, so before we go into the demo, what you've got to do is you've got to you've got to really understand what is it that you want. So if you, I want you to think about it. if you're sitting down with your best girlfriend, friend, whatever, right, and you're having a conversation about fill in the blank. Well, and she, he, they had all of the information possible. What would you ask? Right, so go on mute. Um, so what would you ask them? That's what you need to have in your mind. So like when I ask a question and I don't get the results, I'm like, okay, well, what can I say better that's going to get the results? You've got to use proper English. No slang, no, um, no slang. You've got to use proper English because it understands proper English only, right? So like literal meaning of English or the words that you use, right? So if you want a 30 day content plan, you say a 30 day content plan, you don't use any jargon, don't use anything that's not proper English. Like, I don't know how else to say that, right? Um, and then the other tip is, is like utilize people like me to help you with training and support wherever possible. I mean, if you are a researcher by heart, uh, there are so many like, uh, you know, what what I believe I'm, I'm now falling into is a prompt engineer. It's people who design prompts to help people get the results, right? There's so many people out there in the um, YouTube space now who are like giving out prompts. You know, my focus is on the travel industry. Richard, who created, um, him and his son created Oliver, um, and their space is now also in the travel um, business. So find those experts who really can help you with prompting so that you can start to get the kinds of results. And then there's nothing like trial and error. <laughs> you know, I'm a big proponent of trial and error. All right, so let's see, are you guys ready? Let's see the prompt in action, because then once I show you the action,
then we're going to decompose it so you understand what you need. What I want you guys to do is I want somebody to just throw out their uh, target audience. So tell me who your target audience, people, not uh, destinations. Who is it that you help get out of town? Somebody just uh, type some stuff and I will uh, do it. And I'm going to pick the best one of the ones that I see here. All right, solo travelers. I like that one. Oh, I like overworked executives. All right, I'm going to pick. Uh, I'm going to put. I'm going to put the two of them together. I'm going to put solo travelers and overworked executives. Okay. All right. So um, here, here is the prompt. I'm going to like. Let me know because I don't know if I'm sharing. All right. Can you guys see my chat GBT screen? Can you guys see that? No, we see you Sunday. Okay, hold on. Oh, have I not been sharing at all? No, ma'am. Oh, somebody should have said something. You guys knew I had slides, didn't you? I guess you did it. Now you do. Sorry. All right, it's a good thing I wasn't picking my nose or anything. <laughs> all right, so can you guys see my screen now? Can you guys see my screen? Yes, ma'am. Yes. All right. Perfect. All right. So what I'm going to do is I am going to copy over my prompt in. The, oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to give you guys the um, workbook. Hold on. Please hold. Let me get you the workbook. Please mute. All right. Give me a second. Let me get the workbook for you I guys because this has the prompt in the workbook and all this stuff. So give me one second. I thought I had it up, but I don't. This is the beauty of doing things live. All right, hold on, let me get you the handy dandy workbook and let me put that in chat. Make sure you guys can all see it. All right, copy link and then I'm gonna drop this. So this is the workbook that's going to have the prompts that we're gonna go over so you don't have to like feverishly write them down. All right, and let's make sure I'm sending this to everyone, everyone in the meeting. All right, all right, I'll give you guys a second to open that. Let's make sure everybody can open that. Am I annotating? All right, let me know when you guys are, when you are able to click on that and open it, let me know. Oh, I'm so sorry that I wasn't sharing. I'm gonna have to host I'm this. open. It's open for me Sunday. Everybody can get into it. All right, perfect. Yes. So this document is going to go over. So the prompt that we're going to go over is on, um, it's at the end of the document, but I'm going to walk you through just kind of what that is. I'm going to demo this for you right now. All right. So I feel like I'm annotating. That's the reason why this white thing is here. So many, so many cool tools. All right, hold on a second. Let me get back to my notes. All right, I'm copying. All right, so I'm going to just paste my um, prompt inside here. I think this doesn't say dear. Maybe it does, it does say dear. Oh, I don't like that. Hold on, let me get this. I think I must have pasted the wrong one in. Give me a second. Tested all this all this morning. Give me one second, ladies and gents. Let me get you the prompt of. And we'll start a new chat. Where am I? All right, here we go. All right, let's start a new chat. Okay, so do you see how this is building out? Do you see that? You guys see my screen? Yes. Yes, we see it. Hold on a second, because I want to add. So what did you put in Sunday to bring this up? 
Okay, so what I did is, it's like acting squirrely. I hate when, I, I just love when. So this is the other thing about uh, chat. I didn't, I should have rebooted my computer because I, okay, so what you're gonna do is in this document that I've given you guys on page six is the actual prompt. This prompt right here. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna copy this prompt just like copy the whole thing, just copy everything that's on that page, right? And then you're gonna put it in chat GPT. And then it's gonna ask you to give it six inputs. Am I using, like what version am I using? Okay, so what this prompt has done is it's asking you to put in all this information. So I haven't put that information in, but I'm getting ready to put it in. So I'm gonna put in, my target audience is, uh, I think I said I wanted to do solo travelers, uh, working professionals. And overworked executives. What did you say? Overworked executives. Yeah, solo, solo travelers. travelers. Yes, but hold on just a second. Um, solo travelers. All right, I combined those two because I want, I just sort of like that. The second input is, and I actually already had some of this already done, so I wouldn't be starting completely from scratch. So, so these are the other inputs that I have. I already did that. So I'm just going to add those here so I don't have to type it all out. So these are six inputs that you need to do. We're gonna talk about each of those inputs in this training. But the first one is your target audience. You need to identify what your goal is. You wanna identify what your output is. And then you also wanna identify what type of content you're gonna do frequency and when you wanna start. And then based on that input, it's then going to create a content plan that has all of ideas for your type of audience. And so what you will also, this is just another tip you notice. So this is 30 days because I said daily, it stops at 19, May 19. If you need it to continue, you just type the word continue and then it'll continue adding the rest of the 30 days. So the point here that I wanted to make is with the right prompt, you can get an output that looks like what you want, right? So what we're going to now do is decompose, like, what is the input that we need to provide? I've written the prompt so that we'll output this in a table format. It will give you it based on the frequency that you said. It will deliver content ideas for you based on content types with headlines. And then these are things that you need to do. You need to publish them, right? So that's what the prompt does for you we now need to give it the right input. And I gave it six input, six points of input. That's what you need to do as well. Before I continue, is anyone have any questions on that? Like, and do you understand like the output that we just got here? Right, you guys can tell me in comments. So Judith, the um, you asked, can you scroll back up to the prompt? So the prompt that I pasted, it's also in the workbook and the workbook on page six has the full prompt. So that's the prompt that you're going to use for chat GPT. And then I'm gonna to talk to you about the different inputs that you need, the six inputs that you need to do to make the prompt work. All right. How many of you guys are excited about being able to get content ideas? Like that took like less than a minute. Nobody's excited? You guys are good? Like I can just stop now? Okay. <laughs> All right, you know how I need that? I need that feedback and see how, uh, make sure that you guys are following along. So literally our inputs here in terms of target audience, we said we wanted what? Solo traveler, solar, solar, solo travelers who are overworked executives, right? So let's just take a look a little bit behind the scenes as to what it gave it. Tips for solo travelers for busy executives. Best places for solo travelers for busy executives. How to manage work while traveling solo. Advantages of solo travelers for executives, right? So it's using that keyword 
you know, I would probably do a little bit more information about what kind of executives, but that's what we're getting ready to explore. Uh, that's what we're getting ready to explore. So let's go back to the presentation. So let me talk to you now about the six inputs that you need. So we just went over the actual prompt. You saw it in action. You saw that it will give you results, but let's make sure that you understand how important the six inputs are to the results that you create, all right? So the first input that you need to do, so this is what you wanna do before you start using the prompt. You need to have some context around what you want to create a content plan around. The first thing is, these are the six inputs. You need to know who your audience is. You need to know why you're building the content. We're gonna talk about that. We're gonna know, we wanna narrow it down to which platforms. Don't try, if you're new to content, don't try and post to every platform in your mother. It's just a recipe for disaster. I always say pick maximum two, right? If you are an expert at this thing, and you know, ChatGPT is yet just another tool in your arsenal and you are all over, you are omnipresent and you are everywhere, then fine, you can do that. But if you're new to creating content on a schedule, you're not really very savvy with all the different platforms, pick one, right? It's not about trying to be omnipresent right now. It's about getting yourself in a rhythm and being consistent in the creation and the promotion uh, and tracking of the content that you create, okay? Number three, number four is what is the content content that you create? I like video, not, I mean, I don't love video, but I like it because it's easy for me to just turn the camera on now and just record, right? But you may not be like a video person. You're like, well, video setting, I don't care what you say, I'm not doing video, right? I used to try and force everybody to do video, but not anymore, right? Because there's so many other ways for you to show up as an expert, as long as you've got the process. So you've got to pick the type of content that you want to do. And then your frequency. I will tell you, I think daily is the bomb.com now. You wouldn't have had me say that, you know, <laughs> yeah, last year, like 12 months ago, but now it's easier. It's I'm not going to say like it's the easiest, but it's definitely easier for me to come up with content consistently to be able to deliver it week, uh, daily, right? If that's not your thing, three times a day, two times a day. I frankly don't care what your frequency is, just be consistent as you start to start, as you start to get into this superpower, which is creating valuable content that your audience wants to see. And then you just need a start date. So if you're going to do, and this is just to help you from a planning perspective, if let's say I'm picking May 1st because it's two weeks away, right? If you start planning now for May's content, right? By the time you get to May, you should have it already scheduled, right? That's literally what? 16 days away uh, for having it scheduled, that's a lot, that's a year for me, <laughs> 16 days. So you just need a start date so that you can set when your content will actually start. All right, so let's go into the first one. First formula is your target audience. I cannot talk about target audience enough, right? I talk about it all the time and many of you all still are struggling with what a target audience is. Um, it really, I cannot put it any simpler than this. It's who do you help get out of town? period. It's not your destination. It's not where you get them out of town. It's not how you get them out of town. It's who you get out of town. Who do you want to focus on getting them out of town? And you need to understand why they can't get themselves out of town, right? If you know those two things, you've got a good making of a target audience. Does that make sense? Like understanding the who and why they, why they can't get themselves, because there's a reason why your ideal person wants to not have to do this. They want to get out of town and there's something that's preventing them from doing it. And if you don't know, that's your job is to know because that is then how you create valuable information, content to address their why they can't get out. They, we know they want to, but we don't know, you don't know why. So it's very hard to connect on that level, right? So hopefully that makes sense. Um, all right, so let's talk a little bit about what I created. I created a demo, um, not a demo, I created a prompt to help you with understanding your target audience a little bit better. So inside of, 
I think you actually start from the top. If you start on page two of the activity that I gave you, this is the prompt for you to understand your target audience. And we're going to substitute the yellow. So we're just going to copy this prompt in its entirety. Um, and I have a little cheat sheet that I'm copying here. And I'm just going to start a new chat because I just want to start fresh. I don't want to do anything new. And I'm just going to put that here. I'm going to paste the content here. And I love when ChatGPT is just so polite. It's like, of course, just give me who it is. And so I don't really know who that solo traveler is. So I'm going to say solo traveler. What did I say? Traveler overworked executive. Right, and I'm gonna give it just a little because I'm gonna just say one. All right, and then I'm gonna then what it's going to do is spit out some results. And let's break down the results that it's spitting out. So what I did here is I asked it, I asked in this prompt to identify some demographic characteristics about the uh, the the type of person I just put here. Right, I put. So they're saying statistically, you know, data rise that this person is 30 to 60. So if you're trying to, you know, work with somebody who's under the age of 30, it's, I mean, just naturally, if you've done any market research on your target on, it's not likely that you're going to have an overworked executive under the age of 30. Not to say that you don't, don't tell me, you know, I don't want anybody sliding in my inbox saying I'm 25 and I'm overworked and I'm a high power executive. I'm just saying, statistically speaking, the age range is going to probably be probably on the end of the spectrum. But this is just letting you, this is a wide range anyway. But this just lets you know kind of what is here. Also tells you that the income level is anywhere from 75 to $250,000 locate, location. Um, common solo travelers live in urban areas, New York, London, and Tokyo. Why location is important is because the location could be when it comes time for you to start running and promoting your content, you may want to focus in this location. I don't recommend targeting location until you've built up some history with um, advertising, but it's also good to know where this is. Then the other thing that I've asked it to do is identify pain points and challenge, common pain points and challenges for this particular group of people. Now, again, this is not the holy grail, but it at least gives you some starting point and language for you to understand that what they may be concerned for. So solo travelers obviously would be concerned about safety. Women probably are more concerned about this, safety and security concerns when traveling alone as a solo traveler, especially unfamiliar destinations you know, finding the right balance between relaxation and adventure, managing the logistics such as transportation, finding the best deals, navigating cultural differences and language barriers. Again, these are general, right? If I were doing this, I would want to expand more. So I would ask like, okay, give me some more challenges and uh, pain points. I would ask specific questions like, why can't these people get themselves out of town, right? I would start to have a conversation, but this at least gives you a good starting point for you to have this conversation to learn more about your target audience if you don't have these kind of keywords, because you need these keywords, you need these pain points, you need to understand this so that you can then create content that's going to address these pain points. Hopefully that makes sense, right? Another thing that I've included in the results of here, strategies to attract. So this is really future um, in terms of what you can do is really thinking about what can you create in terms of content and potential offers that will allow you to connect with this audience based on what they're concerned with. So you'll want to take a look at this section. So effectively, I've given you a sort of target audience brief with this prompt. So you can then take a look at the results of this prompt. Also gives you some ideas in terms of what you can create um, for niche experiences. So when you're thinking about, okay, well, what kind of packages should I create for this? Or how can I specialize or marry my love of a particular destination to 
my audience, here are some ideas that this will help you with. And then how do you position your services? That's the other item that you have here, okay? And then um, it looks like I copied an older version because I also added this last piece right here. Uh, so your version has this number six, the one that I copied did not. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to summarize in two to three sentence your target audience so you could then copy it for your prompt number one, your input number one. So when you copy directly from your PDF, this one, it will also include the summary. This is what you're going to want to copy. And we're gonna actually save this off. I'm gonna open up a notepad. Um, and I'm gonna save this off because we're gonna actually use the results of this when, um, when, uh, I guess my notepad, you can't anchor it to here. So I'm just gonna save this off because that's gonna be my number one input now that we've done that. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll uh, pause for just a second. Perfect, I'm glad you guys are enjoying this. All right, so now you've got a way for you to get some more information about your target audience, okay? That's number one, input number one. Number two, is now that we've got our target audience, you've seen it in action, now you've got some more, you know, my recommendation when you're doing this target audience work is, is just continue the conversation until you're tired. Like, so you wanna try and get, it's not like I'm giving you a starting point, but really start to be hungry about knowing your audience because the more you know about them, the more tailored content you can create about them, the more specific and the more likely that they are going to be like, oh my God, she's talking to me, right? So this is an exercise I would encourage you guys to continue, explore, like get more pain points, understand, like understand some of the keywords that your audience is using, um, understand specifically why travel is their Achilles heel, right? Services that you can create that you could sell to them from a travel expertise perspective, right? Utilize the tool for that. All right. Um, business goals is your input number two. Really, there are three business goals that you should have when it comes to marketing. You either want to make people aware or inform them about your travel business and your services or your expertise or your fill in the blank, right? Your offer. If you're selling something, you want to make them aware of something, right? And then your second objective should be really to get engagement. You want them to click in, you know, attend, show up, buy, whatever that is, you want them to be engaging in the content that you create. If it's a video, you want them to view it. If it's a, if it's a poll, you want them to respond to it. If it's a post, you want them to like it. You want them to comment on it. You want some sort of engagement. The more you can increase your engagement, the more organic visibility you will get when it comes to social media um, marketing. So if you're posting stuff and nobody's interacting with it and you're on Facebook and you're not paying for it, you're not, it's not gonna happen, right? But if you're on other platforms and you're not getting views and you're not getting likes and you're not, that means that it's not getting engagement and it's not likely being seen, right? So it's oftentimes, it's not, it's not, it's not you, it's you. <laughs> and what I mean by that is you create content and you think, oh, well, nobody is out there. People are out there. Your content's not interesting to them. I, I mean, I don't mean to be an ass about it, but that's what it is. And so it's because you're you're normally, a lot of people, they're creating generic, non-clickable content because you haven't done any work in the target audience space. So you're hoping to attract everybody and you're attracting nobody because you're not specific enough. So if, if like this solo overworked executive and you're speaking to her, you're talking to her in her language or his language, their language about what their problems are, 
they're going to pay attention because people only care about themselves. Like at the end of the day, your content needs to highlight their problem because that's all they care about is their problems or their wants, right? And then increasing sales. Everybody knows that. The problem is with content is you're starting with the sale. You're starting to try and sell. You you have multiple thousand dollar packages and you are starting in the gut, punching them, saying bye, 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 and they don't know you. They don't know you. They don't like you. They don't have any opinion towards you. And I'd rather be disliked than have no opinion about me. Does that make sense? Like, I want you to have an emotional response to me. <laughs> Either you like me or you don't. And if you don't like me, that's great. I'm okay. But if you like me, you're going to listen. You're going to hear me. And that's exactly what you want for your clients. So when it comes for you all, if you are trying to build an audience, when you put in input number two, it's the first or second bullet. It should not be to increase sales because you don't, you should only be selling to people that already know you. So your input number two will be to increase awareness about your brand or get engagement um, with you specifically or your page, your business. That's what, or both, right? Because when I write my input, I'm looking for in awareness and um, engagement. And I think in the example I put, I'm trying to grow an email list. And that is an example of awareness, okay? So that's input number two. Really very simple there. Like, don't go, don't go after sales and you just met somebody, okay? Like, does that make sense? Uh, would you say the word wording will receive engagement? Uh, no, use the exact words I put here, increase engagement. Um, you can put, uh, other types of words that you can use when you're prompting, um, would be like likely to get clicks, right? Cause that's a very specific engagement likely. Like if it's an email, likely, like when I do subject lines, I'll do, give me five examples of email subjects likely to get opened, right? So the engagement is the thing that you want to happen, which is a click, a response, you know, a stop, a smiley, an emoticon, something, right? Uh, uh, a comment. So if you're using the word generic engagement, the word just saying increase engagement, if there's a specific type of engagement that you want, you could say that in your goals. All right. Okay, input number three is in um, decide on your content types. Now, remember, I used to try and force you all to do video. I'm gonna still say that video is still the bomb.com and is still the, the most powerful content type to create in the social media streets. <laughs> um, video is still the most powerful, but there are other content types. And if video, if showing up, you know, doing live videos is not your thing. Recorded videos is not your thing. There's still other means by which you can create content that's still very powerful and still allows for connection. Photos, um, high quality images of destinations, hotel attractions and activities, right? But again, um, I, I always say context, right? If you're, if you're, if you are, if you are dealing with solo travelers and you are, uh, you, you specialize in solo travelers, you doing images of people in Jamaica, you know, all hugged up with their boo is not a context picture, right? So you need to understand who your audience is. And when you're creating those photos, make sure that you have them in mind. Videos, short clips, longer videos, uh, just video period. Like any type of video is going to be great because there's so many ways that you can reuse it. And it does something powerful from a like emotional, like audio perspective and then sight perspective. It's another layer of connection that your uh, ideal client can have with you as a person, right? They see you as a person, they're able to connect to you. They, they, you know, they either like your voice or they don't, right? Um, and it just allows them to see, see you and you're not just some sort of um, invisible person behind the scenes. Um, stories, definite feature in all the platforms now. So stories, it's just another uh, form of video. Um, but, you know, I'm thinking like video stories, but this is stories that you can do and then make those stories, personal stories related to your ideal client that you can um, do, you know, behind the scenes stories about yourself and what you're doing. That's always good as well. 
Reels, which is just a short form of video, blogs, uh, blog posts and articles, that's long uh, written content, really great opportunity to showcase your expertise. People still read blogs, it's still people, still people read. I know it may be hard to believe, but people still read. And having an opinion as a person of expertise is great. So having a blog is a really great um, idea uh, for the travel business because you create those blogs, it's just like video. If you do it well, it will live forever out there in the internet world. Infographics, I love, I do not do nearly enough infographics. I certainly have a notebook full of all of my infographic thoughts, but we need to translate those more into images. Um, but that really is, info, you know, visual representation of concepts that you have. So, um, you know, data, if, you, if you've got steps. So let's say, uh, you know, one a, an infographic that comes to mind, we just came from Cuba and there is like, <laughs> Like I literally should probably do an infographic. There's a lot that you need to do when going to Cuba's, uh, um, you know, process. Nobody speaks English, so you need to go to this. You need to have this document, right? And then just like doing an infographic on the journey from the airport to the pickup, that would be a great infographic. So infographics are great there because they they really do allow you to uh, show a visually concepts. Um, and then user generated um, content. I really like this one because people love to talk about themselves, right? So any opportunity that you allow people to talk about themselves, then you wanna do that. So asking questions that garner responses, that's user content. Um, asking like a question, like what's your favorite color, right? I mean, it's kind of corny but people love to talk about their favorite color, their favorite food, their favorite destination, whatever. So when you can get that kind of engagement, that's always good too. And then this whole concept of virtual tours, I really, um, really want to understand, and I have yet to do any research on this, but this whole concept of the metaverse, you know, I wonder how the travel industry is going to handle the metaverse and like having like, you know, virtual experiences of destinations in the metaverse like i know i went a little bit way left but i i, I foresee that coming but virtual tours are really you know pre-recorded or recorded video at a destination so you guys are already doing that when you guys do fam trips and you're like going in the room and you're doing that right so although i appreciate the value of looking at a room really immersing people in the food, the activities, doing that kind of stuff is also a great opportunity as well. So these are all different content types. You know, I don't think that you need to do all of them when you are building your content plan. You don't need to do every single content type. Pick a few that you're going to be consistent with, right? So like for us, our, we've got like three. We do um, blog posts, uh, we do blogs, we do posts, and we do, I do a, a live video every week. So that's what mine are. So I have three that I do consistently, and then we reutilize all of that throughout the month or what have you. So same thing there. I like video, but I'm not like doing a bunch of reels. I'm not doing a bunch of stories. Um, there's certainly a lot of opportunity that I could do to do that. But if you love video, like just do video, right? Do video and maybe do blogs, right? Or do videos and do posts and that's it. Like, because you can literally use those videos and create multiple different types. So content um, types, that's going to be your number um, three uh, input item that you need to put. Choosing your social media platform, we've talked about this one to two maximum. Do not try to be everywhere all the time at this stage in the game. If you feel like you got this down and you're ready to be, then do them all. I don't, you know, really don't have an opinion on that if you feel good. But if you're new to this, pick one, do it well. Like if you like Instagram, that's your thing, then say Instagram. If you want to do Facebook and Instagram, then do it. But don't do Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, TikTok, all that at the same time because it's too much. All right, frequency, you know, my top recommendation is daily. Every other day is okay. Two to three times is okay. Really, like I said earlier, how whatever you pick is okay. Just be consistent as you start to build. I remember when we first started doing a blog, I was like, I can commit to a blog a month. <laughs> like I was like, I can do one blog a month. 
I did that blog. And then once I did it, I was like, oh, that wasn't so bad. So then I was like, I can do two a month. And then I was like, I think I can bump out one a week. And then I'm like, okay, that's too much. I need to bump it down to three a, a month, right? So same thing. Figure out what you can initially commit to increase or decrease based on what will allow you to be consistent. Because the worst thing that you can do is start something, your audience get accustomed to it, and then you stop. Okay. All right. Sample of some frequency by content type. Content photos daily. Great. Videos two to three times a week, stories every other day, right? So these are just recommendations. This, do not take this as the holy grail and be like, Sunday said, I need to do a virtual tour every month, so I need to do one every month. No, these are just ideas in terms of what you can do for the different content types and the frequency that you can establish for the type of content that you're doing, okay? Let's just make sure. Any questions, comments, thoughts here? Mm. That is your six inputs. And so what we're going to do is now that we've blown that idea out a little bit more, I'm just going to do that. I'm going to do that um, prompt again, um, but I'm going to give it the detail, um, the detail, um, the detail target that I did. Um, I don't know why it's doing that. I didn't do that earlier. So I'm going to just stop generating that. Um, I'm going to give it this detail. So I'm going to just give this the details that I got from the other one and see if it gives me a better um, results. I just copied over the summary here. Yeah, so you see that Uh, what annotations do you see? I think I turned something on. Um, hold on, let me see if I can stop sharing for a second. I think I clicked on something and um, I'm so Zoom challenged. That's so funny. Like I, let's see if I share again. Like, do you guys still see those annotations? No, we see you. You see me? Okay, let me, I'm gonna share my screen again. All right, I think they're gone. Do you still see them now? Do you see the screen now? I see the screen. Okay, perfect. All right, so we gave a better um, a better target audience and the content ideas got better, right? So do you see that? So compared to the first one, the content ideas got so much better. Five safest travel destinations, luxury so essential for the busy executive video tour of a private island, right? So because the target audience before it was very generic, but now the target audience was very, it was much more specific. It gave us better ideas in terms of our ideas and then also better headlines. So the better you can get at defining who the audience is, the better it will give you in terms of results. Any questions on that? Nope. Make sure I'm not missing anything in the chat. All right, perfect. All right, so that's how you build the content plan. So this is just a plan, right? Uh, what did I put in there to get that? I put in the chat, the the prompt, so the prompt, the big prompt, that's on page six of the guide. And then I gave it, I didn't even put in this other stuff. Like I just put in the target audience and then it, you know, I didn't, I didn't put in my goals. This one says generate leads and sales, right? Preferred social media. It, it picked Instagram. So I didn't define that, but if you were to define that, it would then pick the appropriate content for the area. Um, and so now you've got the plan, right? So this just tells you the day of the week, the content idea and the headline. That's not really content. That's just the plan of what you're going to talk about on these days, right? So now we know that we wanna do a blog and we want to do potentially this headline. Now you've got to create the blog. You need to create a photo with a caption. You need to 
host a video, right? So that's the content. The first thing is to come up with what it is that you're going to talk about. Then you've got to create it. And so now what we're going to do is talk about the best ways to create that. So start date, we've already talked about start date. So that really is just when do you want to start the content? And just remember this tip when you're doing um, a chat GPT, it has a limitation of the amount of of words that it can bring back. So you'll see this oftentimes where it will stop and you'll need to ask it to continue. And so all that you need to do, so if you get you get this stopping, it's not broken, it's just reached its limit in terms of its output. So just ask it to continue and then it'll continue um, the item. Like this one here, I don't know if ChatGPT is just tired of me <laughs> today because we've been up a long time today. So we've been working out since about three o'clock this morning. So when you lose this context here and you see it didn't put it in the table, just tell it like, listen, dude, um, it didn't, you didn't do the thing. It's not in the table. It's not in a table fashion format. Just let it know and it'll, it'll apologize for being inept. <laughs> then it'll go back and do it. And I waited to a couple of minutes. So that also may be the situation as well. But you see, I let it know and it's see it again stopped here. So I'm just going to tell it to continue. And then it finished. Take care of yourself there. Right. So Sometimes it'll do some squirrely things. Don't get frustrated. This thing is still in beta. Like, I think, I don't even think like this is like it's officially released version, although I am using plus I'm paying and will probably pay whatever, <laughs> whatever they hold me to pay. But that's just a little tip that it may stop the content. If you've got a lot of content that you're getting results from, and in that case, just ask it to continue. If it doesn't do it in the format, Sometimes it's just best to just stop the chat, start a new chat and restart because that way it will, it, maybe it's lost context. I haven't figured it out. Now, remember what I said, always when you get results, what do you do? You copy the results somewhere, right? Because the worst thing you can do is you come back and you go, come back tomorrow and it's gone. So simply you can just go to Google Docs and type it. Like I... I don't use Google Docs anymore. I use another tool, um, but I'm not going to go in there because I'm going to get sidetracked. So here, I don't want to do that. I just want to create a Google Doc. I'm just going to create a Google Doc here. And I am going to just paste that. I just did a control V and it just pasted the whole thing here. So I like that there. So I, every time you create something, um, <laughs> yeah, it's very much tired of me. Um, every time you create something, just get in the habit of saving your results. So once you're happy with the results that you get, copy it and save it. And if you are, you are not a key person, I don't know how you do it in Apple. So I apologize. I'm not an Apple user, but for uh, PC users, you'll just highlight it and you can right click and copy or you can do a control V at the same time and copy it and then paste it there. All right, so now we've got our table. This is our 30 days, right? This is all the stuff that we are gonna talk about. So now we've gotta talk about how do we actually create the content? So batch content creation. So now I've got this, this thing, what did, it, what did it tell me to create? It told me to create some videos, some blogs, some photos, like that's a lot of stuff, right? So I wanna, I wanna create this, I gotta create blogs now, I gotta create videos now, what am I gonna say, what am I gonna talk about? So this is where you can also use ChatGPT to help you build out the actual content that goes along with this. And so, the first thing that I like to do is, um, is I like to get it, I like to have it in a table because I'm a visual person. So I like to see it in a table, but then I'm also a list person. So one of the things that I do is like create me, create me a list of content I type. And I do it right after that so that I can, it, it keeps the context meaning. And so what I mean by context is that I just asked for the plan 
And so it knows what to create the list from the thing that was just right before it. So this will be something I would do right after. And then I would also copy this out into my Word document. Word, Google, whatever you're using, right? Your notepad, I don't care. So I would copy this whole thing. So I would copy that just so that I know that I've got now all of these things that I need to create. So now I know, and it's, it's pretty easy. Now I know I got these photos, I've got these videos, and I've got these stories that I need to do, and I've got these reels, right? So what then can you do with all of this stuff? Well, you need to create, if it's a blog, you need to create the blogs. If it's a reel, you need to create the reel. If it's a, whatever it is, you've got to create the thing, right? So how do you create the thing? Well, this is how you do it. You can either do it through creating an outline for each of the topic areas. You can create variations of, of an item. And what a variation is, it simply is the, um, Let's say I do a video. I'm looking at this video that's right here. So I think one of these was a video. Um, let's say this blog post, this is a variation. Top 10 list of travel destinations, accommodations and activities for solo female travelers. I create that blog. A variation would be to create a video about the same thing. A variation would be to create a post and do a post series that showed each of the lists with a with a um so the top the top destination that's a post the second destination that's a post so that's using one piece of content and creating variations of that same content uh doing the same uh same content title or topic and so you can help you can have chat gpt help you or a um, AI tool like Oliver help you with creating those variations. You can also have chat GPT with expanding um, the content for ideas. So example is like, if you've got a blog like you're going to do, you can, you can generate additional blog topics on that particular item. You can, uh, so let's, let's actually, take an example of that. So one of these videos is uh, travel guides for popular destinations, right? So I'm just going to highlight that. And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to ask it to give me five content variations. So this is that one topic, and now I've got five additional topics on that one topic. So that's what a variation is. Um, and then, a, I'm sorry, that's what an expansion is. And then a variation is, I wanna create a video. So I'm going to create a video, a video about, and I'm just gonna, I just, I'm gonna paste that topic. Travel guides, give me five ways. And then it's going to give me five ways that I can do that. You can post the video on your social media. You can embed it on your website. You can share the video in your email address, email list. You can use the video in a paid social media. You can use the video. You can create a webinar, right? So when it comes to content, you can just create the straight items. But my recommendation is don't try and do 30 pieces of new content. Like that would be my recommendation. Don't do that. Like think of like maybe five or six solid pieces that you want to do for the month, right? And then create variations of them. That's really the recommendation. That's really the, the advanced technique. So you're not sitting there trying to create, you know, 10, 10 or 15 different blog posts. You know, you've got to sit in front of the, the computer, you know, five hours worth of videos because you want to train on whatever. It's really try to reuse the same piece of content. I said five, you could come up with 10. You literally could come up with 
five, like if you just want to do video and you still want to create emails and posts, you can give me five ideas on my on my my um, ideal client and then ask it for variations and then you can create your content ideas from that. So that's that's really when it comes to batch is what is it that you want to batch up and what I mean by batch is. This is really how I batch. I batch either by, um, I've given you some prompt ideas here, and I believe I put that in the guide here. But when it comes to your content, I just gave you variations that you can create. So ideas in terms of how you can reuse the same piece of content, how you can expand the piece of content. What it didn't do is talk to you about how you can do an outline. So let's literally, let's take that same topic and let's create an outline. Create an outline for a blog for and then what it does is it will create a so what it's asking you to do is pick a destination and so let's say you don't have a destination in mind i would ask what are the best destinations for your type of audience? So again, you want to give it context in terms of who it is that you're talking about. So this would then be a good blog outline, and then you could then start to elaborate it, right? Literally takes a couple minutes for you to like, like I, if I'm doing a blog and let's say I've got four of the blogs to do, I don't batch by content type, I batch by week. So every week, because we have a certain amount of content that we do, so I sit down, um sunday or monday and i batch out my content so we do a blog we do tips and tricks we do a video we do a um we're now doing a freebie offer um and we do uh we do a replay so i batch out all of that in one like it takes me about two hours to batch out all of that so i have all of that content all the emails all the social media posts the setup all of that done the outline everything I batch out I have it done usually in 90 minutes and scheduled in 90 minutes for everything, because I have a plot a process by which I do it so I batch by week, you can batch by blogs I have in the past batched by content type. So I had four blogs for the month that I was going to do I would sit down and I would write out four blogs right, the more that you can stay in the zone of what it is that you're doing the easier it is for you to create. So if you know that you've got four blogs, you just have the list of blogs, you could build out all the outlines and then you could then build it all out. Mm -hmm. Canva does this as well. Um, yes, Canva does have the ability to do that. They have an AI tool within Can Canva um, in their magic doc um, option. I'm not gonna show that um, there, but it's literally using the back end of uh, the back end of Canva is ChatGPT, like it is. Um, I don't particularly like Magic Doc uh, because of the way it formats. Because I am a diehard uh, doc document person, but it is absolutely a great tool to build. I have one client who's using uh, the Magic Doc to build her presentations, her proposals. Um, and building all of our images in the same plot, but the AI tool that's in there, it, it, the back end of it, it's connected to a tool like ChatGPT. All right, so that's batch, uh, that's building the outline. So this was just the outline. You literally could then take it down a level and then build out the outline, the the bullet. So like what I like to do is once I build the outline and I'm comfortable with the outline and this is asking for destination, I'm going to add the additional information. I'm going to say, where are we going? Let's say we're doing Bali, like that's like, like top of my list, right? So Bali is the destination, you know, target audience. Uh, we're already, it's still got the context of solo traveler. Um, and so let's see what it says. Something, so this will happen sometimes is that it will get upset. And so you just need to refresh and you just roll with the punches. Recognize that when you're dealing with new technology, things are going to go awry. So uh, this one, so it the refresh completely started the screen over. To the left is your history um, there of what you were working on. And so it lost that last message. So I just need to type it again. Ollie is the destination. Okay. 
So now you see it, it changed out the destination and it went to the, the particular travel. We're in Bali. And then it's giving me some very specific information here. Now, this is a blog right here. Would I structure this blog like this? Probably not, right? Maybe I'm new to blogging and I don't really know what the blog structure should be. So I'm going to ask, I want you to think of it. It's your girlfriend, your best friend, your best buddy, right? And like, what's the, what's the structure? What's the best structure for a blog? And then it's going to tell you what's the best structure. And then, you know, uh, based on that, I would then ask it for an outline and then based on that and some more clarifying information, I would do that. I, I would I would then be able to then create a blog post or article that had the information. So notice some of the things here is summarize the main points, right? But it doesn't have context. So this is the this is the format or the template for the blog. Now I want to apply it. So um, use best practices for creating a blog for So I should have I should have copied and pasted the topic that I had and I didn't. So if you ever need to edit something, like the best way to do, there was like a little, let me cancel that just to show you again. Like I didn't, I didn't give it context. So I'm gonna edit this and then I'm going to just put that uh, topic here and then save and it'll regenerate um, regenerate the answer. It doesn't like that. It's giving me um, well, it's giving me the best practices, right? A compelling topic. But I wanted to actually do the blog. So I just didn't word it properly. I will, what I would, what I would do in this situation, like this is like, I would be like, okay, this is great. This is not really helpful. I don't know how to write a blog. Like I, I'm gonna say that to it. I don't know how to write a blog. All right. And then we still didn't give it Bali. So it's still doing generic destinations. So, but here it's telling you what you should do. And then I would give it the context of the destination that I was doing, and then it would write it. So I'm going to say, okay, destination Bali. And now this is giving this here. So when you read this, so remember I said, you've got to read what it's doing. It says, begin with the hook or attention grabbing statement. All right, well, what would be a good hook, right? I would ask it that. I actually have a blog template that I'm using when I actually create a blog that already has like hook headline and all this um, stuff. So when it comes to the content type that you're wanting, if you have a structure that you're already using, give it that structure and then give it the topic and then it'll follow the structure that you've given it. So. Does that make sense? Like, so hopefully that does make sense. So if you don't know something, ask it, what's the best way to do this thing? Review it, see if you like it, create the structure that you want, and then ask it to apply your title, your topic, and then it will create it for you. And then again, make sure that you read what it is that you're doing. The results is actually what I mean by that. All right. Okay, so... One of the things I was saying, I do batch methods by week. You can do it by content type or you can do a combination of both. And that's literally what I do. So I do, my content plan is by week and then um, it's by content there. So we have themes every day of the week has a particular content type that gets created. And then I, I create an outline for each of those days. And then um, I go in one day I sit down and I write out all of the content. So like I said, I pretty much now have it down to about an hour a week. It takes me 90 minutes, probably about an hour and a half, because I also do some image ideas that I give to my graphic artists to create. So you just need to find a rhythm. Once you've got the titles, then you need to then build out what it is that you want to say. All right, so here's some ideas in terms of contents. Uh, if you're going to do it by content type, 
directly after you do your plan, you want to do a list of top topics by content type. I showed you how to do that. And then it just make sure that you do it right afterwards. So it has the con the context of what it's building the list from. The other one is, is if you want it by week, since you just did your content plan for daily or weekly or whatever your frequency is, it will then split it out by week. That's how my plan is. So, you know, I and my week starts on Mondays. That's when we start our content. So my plan literally starts Monday, day of the week. You know, Monday, you need to do blog. Tuesday, you do tips. Wednesday, you do live. Th Thursday, you do replay, send out, you know. Friday is this, right? So literally my plan tells me exactly what the topic is, what we're going to be talking about and has a preliminary outline that I sit and I blow out and literally have it written within that time frame. All right, so here's some examples, like which method is for you? I've just sort of summarized some of the pros and cons by week. And really for, for you, what some of the pros and cons, they may all be different for you, each of you, but I did summarize this. And for me, the reason why by week is easier is because I don't like to be held to, like I've built out stuff far in advance, but I'm fickle. Like you guys will say something or you guys will do something or something comes into, you know, the news and I want to talk about it. When I build out content too far in advance, we built all that stuff out. And then what I would find is I wouldn't use it because I'm like, oh no, I've changed my mind. So the most I build out content in terms of topics and themes is about two weeks out because I want the flexibility of being able to change my mind based on what I want to talk to. You may not have that situation. You may be like, you know what? And when you're new building up your library of content, you may have the set of topics that you need to, you need to just get them batched out. When I, when I sort of reset the trajectory of our uh, business in 2020, we did that. We literally scratched all of the things I was doing. And I was like, here's the sort of core core principles that I want to have a library to refer to. And that's what we did. So we batched out all of those titles, those ideas, all of that. We batched them out like three months in advance. And I literally every week, that's what I talked about. I talked about this thing, this thing, this thing, this thing, right? I sat down, brainstormed all. This was pre-chat GPT. If I were to do it again, literally would do the same thing. I'd br brainstorm these ideas, batch them out, and then every week we'd be recording this every week we'd be talking about that so when it comes to you building up your presence batching it out by content type maybe the way you want to go as you build up your library of references that people can do and then maybe you go to week or maybe you go to both but what you're looking for right now is a rhythm what's the rhythm that's comfortable to you in your personal life your work life right that you can commit to right that's what we want to do all right, so really quickly, I know that we're almost at, we are out of time, we're already over, but I just want to talk about this whole concept of schedule and forget it, like do it and forget it. So this is the reason why I, I said when I batched by content type, we literally, we scheduled stuff out and I was like, oh my God, we've changed directions. I've got to like unschedule all that. So that's why we go about two weeks out until things start to stabilize in terms of our uh, continuity in terms of themes. And when I try out new themes and that kind of stuff, I don't like to schedule too far out. But what I will tell you is you want to schedule as much of this stuff as you can. So literally, if you decide that you want to do something, let's say weekly, right? Schedule out the month at one time every week. Don't, don't, don't be, <laughs> don't be the person that's like, oh no, I'm going to do daily daily photos and I'm going to go out in nature and take a picture of the tree and I'm going to schedule it. Life is going to get in the way and you're not going to do it, right? So schedule it. Like think about what it is that you want to do, do it and then get it scheduled. Don't think about it. Just let it rip, right? The more you can do that, the better you can be. Now, I'm going to actually start from the bottom up on scheduling tools because if social media is the means by which you are going to be promoting your stuff, right, you're going to be promoting your stuff on Facebook, your post, your quotes, your blogs, your fill in the blank, right, posting announcements and that stuff through a third party app, 
reduces its visibility. I have tested this for years and the answer is still. So I used to use third party apps to post to social media and third party apps don't like that. So particularly Facebook does not like that. So we now use the platform's scheduling features to post our stuff. Inside of a, a group, you can, you can, I think, I don't know how, I don't know if there's a maximum. Inside of a group, you can schedule posts uh, there's a Facebook planner now. I think it's in the Meta Business Verse Suite. I don't know what, what it's called, but you can pre schedule. Canva is a third party scheduling application to social media. I don't recommend doing it if you're, so, if you're posting to Facebook or Instagram because the visibility is lower. So if you're scheduling to a social media platform, use the social media platform scheduling features. If they just don't have it, then maybe use it, but your your reach just you just you just it's they they don't prioritize showing it and for sure Facebook does not. Um, so uh, third party scheduling applications are like Streamyard. Streamyard is a video platform that I use to host my lives on, so I can simultaneously go live and YouTube, Facebook, all my Facebook groups, business pages, all, you know LinkedIn if I wanted to. Um, so you can schedule, you can pre-schedule through StreamYard. Canva, you can pre-schedule now. Um, you know, if you're old school and you're using Hootsuite or Bu Buffer, I used to use Buffer. Um, I've used, I've used them all. I used to use, um, I, I use, I've used so many scheduling, third-party scheduling um, applications. But like I said, we've ceased doing that for at least a year and a half now because of visibility. All right. Um, uh, how, many, how long does it take me to brainstorm ideas for batching? Not any time at all. Like, because I, I do my month, I, I will do a month's worth of content plan. So that prompt that I created for you all, that will be my brainstorm. Those are my ideas. Um, and then every week I go in and I do a week's worth of content. And like I said, I'm trying to get to two weeks. I'm up to about two weeks worth of content in a half. So it takes me about 90 minutes to do a week's worth of content. We And we do a blog, we do, we do, we do six emails a week and we do a blog a week. We do a live a week um, and we do a freebie, a download and opt-in a week now. So it takes me about 90 minutes to create all of the content for that stuff now. So um, the brainstorming is pre-brainstorm. Um, my titles, all of that are done with my um, prompt. And then I just go and I build out the content in about 90 minutes per week. So about four hours then a month. Um, yep. Uh, Facebook's meta business suite is the planner. That's what the, uh, I think Facebook planner is the actual scheduling part of it. But MetaSuite is the, the place to be publishing your Facebook content. And I think you can even do it on um, Instagram. And I think you can even do video now. Like you can schedule video. I think, don't get me the lion. I don't do, I don't use that feature as much as my, um, my graphic artist. She does most of our scheduling. So I don't use it as much as I used to. Then email marketing tools. We I sit down. In that 90 minutes, I write the emails, I write them all out on email, I um, write them on a, in a Word document, and then I get them pasted. I either do it or our admin does it. She takes it and I'm like trying to get to the point where I just do it on the Word document, give it to somebody, and then they schedule the week's worth of emails um, there. And if you're on my email list, you have seen the results of our errors, right? Because we've been sending out emails that have, right? So we're trying to figure out our templates. I'm using a new email tool. Um, so I apologize for that. But the reality is, is that, you know, you're human, you're going to make mistakes. And I'd rather, I'd rather have died trying than to be perfect and not release anything, right? So that's where you need to get mistakes. You'll, you're going to make mistakes, make them, move on, right? I mean, I got, I got the word Nazis telling me how much I misspell stuff and how I'm sending out empty emails. And all I can do is say, thank you for letting me know that, right? And I'm probably going to make some more mistakes and you're going to make some more mistakes. But man, the positiveness that I've gotten by increasing my, my communication with my community 
just warms my soul so much because you guys are responding back to my emails. You're talking to me. You're letting me know how things are going in your business. And I love that. So if I had waited to be perfect, I would have never got that type of engagement. I wouldn't know what's going on with you all. So um, all I can say is don't be afraid to fail. Expect the failure and move on, right? So use the scheduling tools, get it scheduled, make it happen. Don't let that be the excuse why you don't, you're not great. All right, so we went over a lot in 90 minutes. We went over AI, an introduction to that. I've introduced you to ChatGPT. Let me tell you quickly, do you guys have about five minutes? I just want to show you, because um, I am actually going to have Richard come on and do content portal. I did test the prompt in the content portal. Um, and this is, can you guys still see my screen? Can you see uh, Oliver? Can you guys still see my screen? I want to make sure that I'm Yes, we can. Yes. Um, yes. All right. So I tried my prompt in Oliver and Oliver cannot accept table format right now. So that's why I still have to do it in chat GPT. So until they release the feature that recognize uh, tables, planning, not so good. Like I, I didn't think it handled the plan so well, but I do think it will handle the titles and you building out the outlines very well. Does that make sense? So if I have a title of something and I want Oliver to give me like, let's take the same uh, here and I say, give me 10 lists of travel destinations for solo travelers and I give it to Oliver. Oliver, I believe is going to give me a better. So one thing I can do is I can say, write a blog post and then I'm going to say, uh, I'm gonna scroll down here and I'm gonna say, hi, Oliver. Here is my topic for the blog post. And then I'm going to send it and and then Oliver gave me a better set of results um, than ChatGPT using the same thing. Because again, Oliver has been fed travel specific data. Does that make sense? Now, would I be recommending a hostel? Probably not, <laughs> but that's just me. So again, take the, and we didn't give it any context really on the, um, uh, we didn't, we just said solo travelers, but you know, I would, I would give it the same, like, so I'm going to do this again. I'm going to just do this again in a new chat. I'm going to give, I'm going to give it the description that we did for our target audience there. We're going to do a new chat and then I'm going to say blog, write a blog post, but I want, I want it to be uh, for that, that, that very specific audience that we gave and we're going to get some better stuff. So copy that and then here for this audience and then uh, I keep hitting it and it be send. Yeah, so hopefully, yeah, see the the change, the accommodations change. Yeah, I don't, I, I'm like, I don't want to see Hostel. <laughs> like, I mean, don't get me wrong, Hostels, maybe, but I just still think of that movie that was called Hostel, and they killed everybody. So um, <laughs> I don't even think about Hostel. So anyway, so you see how the, the, the results changed because my parameters were more specific. So this target audience parameter is going to be super important for you, okay? All right, so I do like Oliver for content creation. Um, in terms of being able to build a structured plan, not so much yet, but I, I, I foresee as it gets more sophisticated and it they release more features, they've sort of limited the space here. So like it doesn't handle tables really well and i don't like i don't know about the copying the copying i think is okay so you can still copy this out uh here i don't know what it's doing on the history i don't know if he's keeping all the history but again when dealing with these ai tools you just want to get in the habit of copying and pasting until they get some 
master tool that'll allow you to keep all your thoughts straight. And I do have that tool. I'll talk about that um, in another training, but this is really what I do think Oliver is the bomb.com when it comes to our industry. I think he's done a really good job. He's getting uh, up to date information from uh, suppliers. So we should start to really see some very profound, unique, specific information about our industry. So now you can take your ideas that you've, bu you've built in the content plan and then feed Oliver those specific ideas for your target audience and then start to get content. I, I want to tell you too, if you're building video and you want to do reels, ask it for a video script, right? Like literally ask for what you want because the world is your oyster. All right, we went over a lot of stuff today. Let me know in comments, what did you guys think of today's training? And while you were telling me what you think of today's training, I do have a favor. My favor is, is that you fill out the survey that I'm about to give you. Can you guys do that for me? Let me give you the link. I think this link will work. So let's uh, pray that it will work. All right, this is 30 days of content. Listen, at the end of this training, what I want you to walk away from is this, is that value-added content is really based on your ability to speak directly to who you want to help get out of town. Um, that is what you want to do. You want to make sure that you speak directly to that person in terms of what their issues are, what their struggles are, and the more um, the survey didn't come through. Okay, so if it didn't, um, let me make sure I did this to everyone because I think I was speaking to just one person. Hold on, let me see. Did you guys get it this time? Click on that and make sure that it works, because if not, you'll certainly get it at the conclusion of this. But um, your ability to connect and get engagement, get people to, to raise their hand and get on your email list is your ability to not be generic. You shouldn't be trying to appease the everyone. You should be trying to connect to a very specific type of person um, and it's got to be specific. Like, I just, I, I want you to walk away from tonight's training saying, okay, I need to be as specific as I possibly can about who I help get out of town to, you know, I mean, you know, maybe not to their favorite color, but man, if you knew their favorite color, that would be even better, right? <laughs> like, so the more you can speak to that person and those people that you help get out of town, the easier it is that you can see that you can create content. Creating content is no longer the issue. It's not content really now, ladies and gentlemen. It's really how well do you promote that content? That's a whole nother training. This is just about the creation of the content. I don't have a problem with creating content. My issue is I don't promote it enough, right? So it's all around stopping me brainstorming, stopping me creating it's about getting it in front of the people that I want and promoting and promoting and promoting it, right? You can't talk about your stuff too much. Like, let me say that again. You cannot talk about your stuff too much. If you've got an audience of people that love you and want to hear from you, you can't talk about what they care about too much. Why? Because they care about it. Now you can try and sell to them too much because people, that's that's not value add if you are selling to people 24 seven and you're not adding value to them. But if you're talking to that solo traveler who's an overworked executive, do you think that they really enjoy being overworked, right? They want to travel, but maybe they're waiting for their girlfriends or their boyfriends or whoever to go with them. And those people are always broke and they never have any money and they can't get out of town, right? Right. But if you're speaking to that person about why they need to just leave their broke friends behind and go to Bali without them. Right. That's speaking to their soul. Right. That's what you've got to do with content. If you can do that really well with the help of a tool like ChatGPT, you're going to start to see engagement. You're going to start getting people on your list and you're going to be able to sell to them ultimately. But don't start with the sell. All right.
somebody did ask me, I was going to talk about Opus, but I knew that I would run out of time. I had so much stuff. So listen, this is an example of the kind of training that we're going to be doing monthly inside of our Opus membership. Um, so I will be hosting a training once a month inside of Opus. You guys just need to look out for an email that's going to explain to you guys all about Opus and if you want to join in. So this membership is really designed to help you guys get this kind of training, right? I mean, ChatGPT just came on the work on the on the internet streets four months ago, and um, you know, Richard Sewell just released, you know, in beta last week. I think he's been beta beta in it for several weeks now, right? What we can do with this tool is just at the cusp. I mean, we're just at the beginning, right? This is just one of many tools that we will do. This is my passion. This is what I love to talk about. So you guys will have to tell me to shut up uh, for me to stop talking about it. I love technology and my goal and my commitment to you is to show you better ways to improve your travel business, improve your sales, improve your reach through technology. And OPUS, which stands for Operational Pillars of Success, that membership is intended to bring you the mod. So look out for your email where I'll be talking more about it. That's where the replay will be um, at is inside of the Opus membership. Um, and I will see you guys tomorrow because I will be going live. We'll be talking about, I don't even remember what tomorrow's topic is, but we'll be talking about what's tomorrow's topic. Well, the email will be coming out in the morning. So you will find out. So did you guys enjoy our, uh, our, our topic and what we talked about tonight? You guys can come off mute. I'll talk to you guys for about 10 minutes and I'm going to skid out a lot of here. Let me know. What'd you guys think? Hi, Cindy. This is Brenda. Yeah. Brenda. How are you? I'm good. Uh, this you? is amazing. I love chat GPT. I've been thinking around with it for a little bit, but tonight you totally put it into an entirely different perspective. So thank you because you do have to think it through. You got to do all the things that you said. You got to make it yours. Um, you can't be a robot. And I liked everything that you said. Awesome. But I'm so I happy. Have another, I do yes. have another question though. Yes, ma'am. If we all had used the same um, information to put in, do we get the same information back? Yes and no. Okay. Because, um, and I, and I think we, we could test it, right? So like if you all put in the same exact words, what response do you get? So do you guys want to test it? Sure. So let's, uh, well, let, I'm going to put in chat the, the results that I, the prompt that I use to generate the uh, content. And I want to see what results you guys get. Hold on, let me see. Give me a second. Are we going to use Chat GPT or are we going to use Oliver? Uh, Chat GPT can't. I mean, Oliver can't handle the content plan. Okay. We're going to use Chat GPT, and we're, I just want to see if it what it gives you guys for the content plan. If you use the same exact prompt that I used, I keep trying to. Um, hold on, let me share again. That's a good question, Brenda, and I don't have the answer. I suspect the answer is no. We'll have some variations, but let's see. I always say, if you don't, if when in doubt, uh, let's do. I'm gonna just copy the prompt and give it to you guys in chat. Um, so this is the exact prompt. So you actually already have the base prompt. What I want to do is give you my um, inputs. Okay. So everybody has the base prompt. You're going to use um, page six in the guide for you to use the same base prompt. Does that make sense? Brenda, are you following me? Yes. Yep. So use that same base prompt. I'm going to give you the same, the exact inputs that I gave it and see if your results are the same. Let's do a fresh, let's just do a fresh, because uh, I can't find it. I'm going to do a fresh um, version of this. So I'm going to do the same thing. So we're apples to apples. And we're going to do this live. I feel like, I feel like we're in a game show. <laughs> All right, hold on. I'm going to copy this. This is the prompt. And then I'm going to give you the... Um, all right, 
So those are the results. Did you get those results when you put that in? Okay, let me put it in. And then I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you the target audience. I'm going to give you all of the same things that I'm going to use. I'm going to give you this target audience and put this in chat for you. I got the same thing. You got, yes, what you should, because that prompt is generic. So it's the same prompt. Here is the, that's the target audience. I want you to put that target audience there. Now, the nuances between you and me is you aren't going to use the same language that I use when I search for my target audience, right? So you all should get the same question because that's the way the prompt is designed. Like your results, when you put in the first part of the prompt, you should, it's asking you to put in the inputs. It's asking you to put in the target audience, the business goals, right? And you guys are all going to put in different answers. Right, but in this situation, you should be copying the same thing I copied. Did you get the same results that I did? We got the same results. You did, right? Because you put the same input, but it's not likely that you will all be putting in the same results. Uh, input, that's, I mean, input. Does that make sense? Yeah, that does make sense because everybody's audience is a little bit different. Everybody's personality is different the way they want it to be written. So, yeah. That is correct. And so, Another way for you to um, add some personalization is this whole concept of feeding it your, your information, meaning like if I wanted to understand who I am or I have a, a, an offer, like I have a sales page for a product, I'm going to say, I'm going to, I'm going to say, hey, ChatGPT, analyze the sale page for tone, for voice right? Because that's the way that I talk, right? So I've been training chat GPT on the way that Sunday talks and delivers stuff. Because when I get ready to set the context at the beginning of a chat, let's say I'm doing a blog, or like I have a newsletter, I'll be like, okay, here's my last month's newsletter. I want a new newsletter using the same format in a casual tone with a bit of humor. Those are actually my words, right? In a bit of humor, um, sarcastic or, you know, right? So those little nuances are going to start to help to personalize it to the way that you speak. So the more comfortable you get with using the tool, the more that you're going to be able to get it to give results the way that you would write and speak. Does that make sense as well? It does. It does. Yep. So the reason why you got the exact same results is because we use the exact same words, but we're human and it's not likely that we would be giving it the exact same inputs the way I'm trying to structure you in terms of the prompt so that you know that you need to give target audience, you know that you need to have business goals, preferred, right? But even the platforms that you use is going to help change, it's gonna change your results. Okay, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Awesome. Yep. This is really cool, thank you. You're welcome. All right, any other questions or comments? How is everybody else feeling about this? Nobody has an opinion. This has really been perfect. Um, there's something that you really touched on. And again, the light bulb came on. It's not what I'm doing. It's not being effective enough. Um, reach out to my target audience. And and just be, and I, when I said I work with women over 55, I need to drill that down to what? Are they empty nesters? Are they retired? Are they semi-retired? I need to drill it down because what I'm getting is a lot of stuff that's not really targeting my audience. And I believe that's why I'm not getting the results that I want. But by your class have helped me to identify what I need to do. And thank you so much. You're welcome. Well, I'm glad that you enjoyed it, Mary. It's always a pleasure talking to you. Sunday, this was amazing. I didn't even know what AI was until I came into this masterclass. So I appreciate everything. I'm a little overwhelmed. I guess I just need to go through it again and and kind of make a, a try. I'm, I'm happy organized to do it, but I appreciate everything. And if we have any questions, can we reach out to you? Yes, you can reach out to me inside of the group. 
Thank and you. if you join Opus, then when I uh, release Opus, then we have a community and inside of that community, we are going to continue the conversation specifically about the 30 day content. So the community will be. Is, the Opus group is already created, right? Cause I think I'm in, I get emails from you all the time. Um, if the you part. are, then, uh -huh. thank you. All right, ladies, anything else that you guys want to chat about? Let me make sure I didn't miss any. Somebody asked about how do you sign up for Oliver? Hold on. Um, let me get you the link. I think it's open now. So Oliver is... Um, I think it's just here. I think, uh, I think it is just here. Create your account. I'm going to drop that in chat. There you go. All right. Did I miss any other questions? Did the survey work for everyone? No, it a survey was asking me for um, to sign up again. Uh, so um, since you're in here, What's gonna happen is I thought I could bring the survey forward, but it will happen right after this ends. You guys are gonna get a survey and if you could fill mm -hmm. that out, it really does help me when I deliver training um, to get your feedback and your input. So if you could fill it out, that would be great. So as you leave, uh, you'll get a pop-up that will ask you for the survey. Uh, somebody said that they did fill it out. So I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, we, didn't we didn't get the link. It's not uh, showing It'll, it'll show up right after this. Uh, it, so it's a pop-up that's going to come right after the, the end of this. Oh, no, we're talking about the Oliver link. We're looking for it. didn't come up in the oh, chat. I I if you sent it to one person hold or not. Hold on, please hold. Um, I sent it to an individual person. Sorry about that. All right, that's the Oliver link. Did it show up to everyone? Yes, yes thank you. Okay, perfect. Sunday. Um, this is Nicole. How are you? I had a quick question. Um, will we be able to get the recording for this? Uh, the recording will be available for Opus members. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are at the top of the hour. Listen, have a fabulous week and I'll see you tomorrow if you see me um, on our weekly live. Have a good night. Bye. Good night and thank you.